Christy McBain, thanks for joining us this morning and congratulations, although the Liberal Party hasn't conceded. No late night phone call or, uh, or early morning phone call to you this morning? Thank you and good morning. No, no early morning phone call just as yet, but um, uh, with uh, most of the vote now counted, we're very confident um, that Labor will retain the seat of Eda Monero. Are you as comfortable this morning as you were yesterday because um, the, your advantage has, has uh, become slimmer overnight? Yeah, look, at the, the uh, contest is always going to be tight. We knew it was a, a marginal seat um, and that the, the votes would be really tight, but uh, our team's very confident that Labor will retain the seat. Speaking of your team, it was described yesterday as an ugly win. Is that how you saw it? Uh, it was always going to be a tight contest. Eden Monero is, is one of those seats where it will always go down to the wire. Uh, Mike Kelly was a, a fabulous local member here and uh, his personal vote obviously uh, played uh, a part in this. Um, mm. But we're really happy. We, there were swings to us in Chira Beach, in Marimbula and in Bega. So uh, really happy that uh, uh, the local areas that I'm from uh, got right behind me. Well, there must have been um, some booths that disappointed you, though, and, and perhaps surprised you. What do you make of those? Um, uh, Cabago was one. Oh, look, uh, the Cabago area is where Fiona's from, so that's yeah. probably not a surprise. Um, obviously, around Queanbeyan, and where Mike was from, um, there were, were some uh, differences, but there were 14 people in this race. So, you know, a number of minor parties at the last general election, there were less people contesting the seat. So uh, the votes were always going to be spread between a number of parties. OK, um, just uh, looking at the figures, um, the, the primary vote falling away. Is that what you're attributing to, to Mike Kelly no longer being there? Yeah, look, we know Mike's uh, personal vote played a role in this. You know, it yeah. was calculated at around 3%, which is basically what we saw. So um, I've got to hit the ground running now and get right across the electorate and work hard for this area because we know um, there have been cumulative disasters, uh, drought, bushfire and COVID-19 and we've got communities that are doing it really tough at the moment and are feeling uh, like they're being forgotten. So, you know, I want to hit the ground running and make sure I'm representing them in mm. their voices in Canberra. Well, you've said you don't want to be really uh, too political about this. Um, how then do you rate the, uh, the state and federal government's response, ongoing response to the COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, look, the COVID-19 crisis um, uh, has been a difficult one for many communities, uh, but the Eden Monero has been particularly hard hit on the back of drought and bushfires. So, you know, we've seen business owners uh, in Threadbow who have only used their FPOS machine twice in 2020. Mm. We know a number of uh, accommodation and tourist providers right across the coast didn't get that foot traffic. So it's not just COVID for many people in Eden Monero, it's also the impacts uh, of bushfire uh, and drought. So, you know, we've been hit particularly hard. So I think a lot of people are rightly looking for somebody that's not going to play partisan politics in this yeah. and is just going to put their needs first. And that's what I'll do. Joel Fitzgibbon said yesterday, I have no doubt that she, you, will lift the primary vote next time around. Uh, what would you like to see from the party leaders to make sure they're doing their bit in that regard rather than heaping all the pressure on you? Look, uh, Anthony Albanese has been a tremendous support to me during the entire campaign. He's been in the electorate over 20 times. Uh, he's come with me to listen um, to people that have been impacted by bushfire. He's come with me to listen to people um, that have been impacted I guess I'm uh, talking by the about... COVID disaster. So, sorry to interrupt, uh, Christy. Uh, just um, wanted to ask you about between now and the next election, what, what Labor needs to do to improve its uh, performance. <laughs> Look, I think in the regions, everybody is after... Um, uh, some additional help. Yep. Um, we know we've been hit really hard by those disasters and it's about making sure that we're protecting uh, jobs and looking at what the future planning is for regional Australia and I think everyone is crying out for a plan. That's why we put forward a jobs plan early in this election campaign uh, because people want to know that uh, when they come to a region that they'll have a job and have a career and be able to raise a family here. So uh, I think everyone's wanting future planning and making sure that infrastructure spend not only stimulates our economy but is beneficial for many generations to come. Tough times for everyone including our representatives. Uh, Christy McBain, thanks for your time this morning and best wishes with uh, the start of a new career. Thank you very much.